Well, good morning, everyone. We're so glad for all of you who are joining us live. For those of you who are going to be watching this later in the day, we're glad that you're joining us too. But today, I uh, have uh, just a real word of encouragement for you. Uh, Shane Seegers and I are going to be bringing a message and kind of having a discussion with you. Even as we lead worship, we realize that we are gathering in homes. Most of us have been in places now where we're encouraged not to gather together with others. And so as we do that, the question is, hey, what can we do and how does this impact our faith as Christians? How does this impact our practice as Christians? Well, the great news is, is that the Bible is full of stories of, of people who went through times of difficulty and times of crisis, and probably none of them apply better in my life uh, or none of them apply better than the life of Esther. At least this is how God has made it uh, really come clear to me. Esther was a, a young girl who had, because of her beauty, was chosen to be a queen to King Xerxes in ancient Persia. And when she got to power, uh, she was a Jewish girl. Uh, an enemy of the Jews wanted to wipe them all out. And she had a chance to speak up. The problem was is that if she went to the king whom she had, uh, was the queen, for whom she was queen, if she went to him unannounced, then she could be executed. But her uncle Mordecai reminded her that if she was afraid to speak up on behalf of her people, that um, this would be she would miss an incredible opportunity that God had given her. In fact, in Esther 4.14, it says the key verse in the whole book, in this Old Testament book, and that's this, who knows if perhaps you're made queen for just such a time as this. And the reason I bring up that verse today is, in times of crisis, we find all kinds of opportunities. Esther realized that she was in the middle of a crisis, and when she realized that, she made the most of her opportunity, and she made a difference. She went to King Xerxes, and she asked for his help to rescue her people and was able to rescue all of them. Now, look, you and I probably aren't going to be put in that same situation, but there are opportunities all around us today, and there are three important thoughts I want to cover with you today regarding that. But, Shane, it's true, and thanks for joining us here uh, today, it's true that we have a place in history too, isn't it? Oh yeah. I mean, God has placed us in this time. And sometimes when bad things are happening, it's easy for us to look and get overwhelmed by the difficulties of it. And we begin to complain and get focused on just how bad things are. But what, one thing that we know is that every difficulty is an opportunity. And yeah. this is the time that God has for us. And so we just like to pray that we take advantage of that opportunity. Why don't you pray for our time together today? Father, I want to thank you so much that we still have the ability to worship you. Even if we can't all be in the same room, our hearts can be united in your presence. And God, it's in your presence that we take such great comfort. Because we don't look at just our circumstances, which can change. Uh, and now there's some that are pretty difficult. But God, we look at you, a God who is so much bigger and stronger and more powerful than anything that we have to deal with. And so, Lord, we just ask that in this time of testing and challenge that we look to you and that we wouldn't see this as just such an overwhelming obstacle but we would see this as a great opportunity for your glory your power to be revealed and for your church to step up for such a time as this we pray this in jesus name amen yeah, and so the first thing that I want, the chain I want to remind you of today is this, that God has purposely, God has purposely placed us at this time and place in human history. All of us. Not just Esther and her time, but all of us. In fact, in Ephesians 2.10, it says this, we are God's masterpiece and he's created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Paul was writing that to all Christians, not just me, not just people in full-time ministry. I'm reminded of a time a few years ago when uh, flying from Dallas to Montgomery, uh, we flew through a lot of turbulence uh, in a flight I was taking, and the plane was bouncing all over the place. We had to keep our seatbelts on the whole time, and man, some of the drops and bounces were pretty hard, and you could even hear people gasp at times on the plane because it was just a rough ride. Well, we landed, and we got off the plane, we deplaned, and we were walking through the airport in Montgomery, and the woman behind me said, oh, I knew we were going to be okay. And I said, well, how'd you know we were going to be okay? She said, because you were on the plane. And I said, well, I don't know how to fly. And she goes, no, God has a purpose for you. I knew the plane wouldn't crash if you were on the plane. I wish, I worked at a church. I wish my leaders at our last church had that same faith, because 
we had a rule where there was three pastors. We weren't allowed to travel together at all because they always knew that if we were all together, something bad was going to happen. Yeah. So I wish they had their, her page. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> but what was funny was I have this. Com- I had the conversation with the woman right there, and I said, "Well, believe it or not, ma'am, God has a purpose for your life too, not just mine." I mean, think about that. In fact, it's interesting. In Acts thirteen thirty six. Um, it says that David served God's purposes in his own generation, and then he fell asleep. David served God's purposes in his generation. Paul served God's purposes in his generation. But how about you and me? I mean, this is a perfect time for us to evaluate. God can use me. I mean, Esther recognized where she was, and she made a difference. I think also with that, you know, we look at David, we look at Paul, and we think these are people who were incredible and had such great purpose. Uh, but where do we fit in with that? Well, God does have a purpose for us. But one of the things, we look at what they did and we think, man, I've got to be perfect to get all these things done. In their lives, it wasn't just about fulfilling God's purpose with perfection. It was more about persistence. They stayed at God's purpose in their lives. Yeah, because sometimes we think, well, I can't do anything, but doing even a small thing is better than doing nothing. Yeah, because, I mean... God's purpose is bigger than just what happens in this next moment. It spans all of creation, all of time. And they were persistent at it in their life, and we need to be persistent at it in our life as well. So today, the reason we want to talk about for just such a time as this is because I want all of us to embrace the fact that God can use us in the middle of a global pandemic. He can. Maybe I could be the one to give an encouraging word. Maybe I could be the one to go check on an elderly neighbor and make a huge difference difference. Now, here's what's also interesting is, in the Bible, at multiple places, people have, had, have been clearly called by God to make a difference, but sometimes uh, when God does this, we ask, them, we ask God to spare us from the very circumstance for which he created us. I mean, uh, if Esther had not gone before the king, she would have missed her moment. And it's funny, when uh, God called Moses from a burning bush uh, Moses had, got, had been a shepherd in his 80s, and he went over to see a bush that was burning. It kept burning. It was never burned up, and God used that to draw his attention. When he walked over to the bush, God spoke to him from that burning bush and said, Moses, I'm sending you back to Egypt. I want you to go and rescue my people. And when he called Moses to do this, it's so interesting. In Exodus 4, Moses says, uh, God has just told him, Moses, I'll be with you when you speak. I'll instruct you in what to say. But Moses pleaded, oh, Lord, please send anyone else. And there are times when God calls us specifically to go and be a good neighbor or to help someone else. And we'll go, oh, this is really way out of my comfort zone. I can't do this. And Shane, that's missing the moment. Yeah, and again, it goes back to what you've been talking about the last couple of weeks about our perspective. Uh, Sometimes we just focus so much on the difficulty or the problem, we don't see it as the opportunity. Moses saw it as just the difficulty of what it's going to be like going back to Egypt and the task of confronting the Pharaoh and everything. He didn't see it as the opportunity that God wanted it to be in delivering his people and revealing his power and glory. And I think that's just one of the things that we have to to trust is look at it as an opportunity. And, you know, this goes beyond just the big purpose. Sometimes it's the things that God does is to prepare us for the big purposes. Mm -hmm. We can find ourselves praying in a way, out of God's will. God, would you take this from me? God, would you not allow this to happen? I want more comfort in my life when we know these are the very things that God is using to shape us and to fashion us so that we can accomplish God's purpose in our lives. Yeah, and if there's anything you gather out of this time together with us today, I hope you get a reminder that God has been working on you all along and on me too, and he has purposes for all of us. So here's a life application for us today. God will show us his purposes for us, and he will give us the power to accomplish them. If you and I would pray that and say, God, would you show me what, how I can be of help today? God will show us. And once he shows us, he'll give us the power to do it. Listen to Paul, 2 Thessalonians 1.11. So we keep on praying for you, asking our God to enable you to live a life worthy of his call, and may he give you the power to accomplish all the good things your faith prompts you to do. I mean, when Paul was praying for Christians in the first century, he was saying, God's going to lead you guys to do all kinds of things. And when he does, he'll give you the power to do it. If it's taking care of someone, if it's praying for someone, if it's helping someone, he'll give you the power to get it done. And that's an encouraging word, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's one of my favorite verses in Scripture because the very fact that God would prompt me 
or God would prompt you, or God would prompt you, because that's what God does. He doesn't just work through other people. You have a personal relationship where he can directly prompt you and speak to you and guide you and lead you. I mean, it just it's one of the things that's made my relationship with God so real. Oh, yeah. So today, I just want to remind us that God has a plan for us, and we need to be open to that. And whatever he leads us to do, he'll give us the power. So let's make the most of these opportunities. And that brings us to point, a uh, second point that I wanted to make this morning. I'm so used to talking from an outline, that brings us to point two, but you don't have the outline, so here's point two anyway. <laughs> Difficult circumstances only clarify God's purposes for placing us here. Okay, so if God has things for us to do, then difficult circumstances bring those out clearly. Listen to what Philippians 2 says. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. So do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. It was uh, a little over three months ago on Christmas Eve, that we had a candlelight service. And this last week, we were doing a staff meeting uh, via Zoom. And Scott Shumpert, who opened up the service a little bit ago, he reminded us, he said, you know, three months ago, when we were praying about, uh, when we were having our candlelight service, one of the things we prayed at that time was that, uh, that God would use us to be lights in a dark world. At a candlelight service, before Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Christ, how the light, how Jesus, the light of the world, came into a dark world to save us from sin. And Jesus told the disciples, I'm the light of the world, and if you follow me, you'll have the light of life. And he told them, now you're the light of the world. Well, we've been praying all along, and at every candlelight service, we always remind ourselves that, hey, not only are we the light of the world, but God's going to put people in our path who need the light of Christ passed on to them. We get to be the conduit. Well, this is our time. Esther recognized she was in the middle of a crisis. And she took advantage of the opportunity, and God used her mightily. God wants to use you and me. I hope that you and I can be greatly encouraged today. God is going to use us to bring light into a dark world. And that always gives me so much hope. Yeah, and and thinking about the candlelight service, it wasn't just when everybody had the candles and we all held it up. Mm. It was just even when one small flame entered in that room, darkness was pierced. And that's our lives. You know, there's times right now where we're not able all to get together and we think, wow, we can't make a difference. But the illustration was one candle can make a huge difference. Yeah, and just because we're not able to gather together, and I blew out these candles because they were dripping hot wax, and that's a very (laughs) unfortunate (laughs) consequence of this illustration. But anyway, um, just because we're not able to gather together in person right now, it doesn't mean I can't be a light. It doesn't change anything of our ministry. In fact, it makes it all the more important. Um, In fact, here's a note. Just because we're not able to gather together in person it doesn't mean our purposes are on hold. God's purposes for you and me are not on hold. He will show us opportunities, maybe at the grocery store, maybe in an interaction through an email with a coworker or a fellow student where you and I can bring a little bit of light into somebody's life. Yeah, because that's important for us to remember that our purposes weren't just meetings. It wasn't just about gathering Uh, together, although we're commanded to do that. There's so much more to being a part of God's body and accomplishing his purposes than just attending meetings together. So even though we can't do that now, it clearly doesn't put on hold what God wants to do in and through us. Yeah, and Shane, you brought up a verse uh, from 1 John chapter 3 at a staff meeting as well. Uh, Why don't you share that with everybody? Yeah, it was 1 John 3, 18 and 19, and it says, Dear children, let us not merely say that we love each other, Let us show the truth by our actions. Our actions will show that we belong to the truth, so we will be confident when we stand before God. And, you know, we kind of brought that up because at this time, that's really a lot of what we're doing is being able to talk. You know, all of our actions have been in our Zoom meetings, and we're Mm -hmm. talking to each other about what's going on. But there's so much more that we need to do than just talking to each other. And a lot of our actions can be done through words, but it's the fact that we make sure that we are engaging people, not just listening to people. And uh, this is what we really want to encourage each 
each of us to do now is to make sure that we're still putting our faith and our love into action, not just kind of sitting on the sidelines waiting for a difficult time to pass. Yeah, so I don't want to miss this. If you're asking yourself, man, there's an elderly neighbor, an elderly gentleman or an elderly woman lives down the street. I wonder if anybody's checking on her. Well, this would be the opportunity for me to go check on her today. And if she has family and friends, excellent. Or if he doesn't, well then, hey, here's my phone number. just want you to know I'm here for you, and we can pray for them. I mean, it's a wonderful way to share light in the darkness, to share hope with somebody who needs hope, and to offer help wherever it's needed. So God has a plan for each one of us. A crisis just makes the importance of shining out in the darkness all the more clear. And finally, a third point that we want to bring up today is that God uses difficult times like this to test us. Now, this is terribly important as well because when hard times come, the question is, am I going to be available here? Am I ready? Am I, am I ready to take a risk, ready to do these things? A couple of interesting scriptures for you to consider. Proverbs 24.10. If you falter in times of trouble, how small is your strength? Hmm. 1 Peter 4.12. This is from the Amplified Version. Beloved, don't be surprised at the fiery ordeal which has taken place to test you. That is, to test the quality of your faith as though something strange or unusual were happening to you. Paul was writing to Christians going through some very hard trials. And he said, don't think it's strange if God tests you. I mean, when hard times come, we experience a test. And every time I bring up a passage about testing, I always want to remind us of something. When we go through a test, it um, reveals where we are to two people, to the instructor and the student. Every time I took a test in college, my professor knew exactly where I was with the material, and so did I. Well, when God tests us, he already knows where we are. But then people say, well, then why do I need to go through the test? Well, for me, because when I go through a hard trial, whether or not I'm available for the light of Christ to shine through me in a particular way, that'll be shown out very clearly. If I'm willing to step out in courage, if I'm willing to step out in faith, or if I'm not, and then I'll know. If I'm doing well, I'll be encouraged, and I'll go, okay, good, I've learned a lesson. If I'm not, it shows me something I need to work on. That's why James 1 says this. It says, consider it pure joy. Consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let's let it do its work so you become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. And Shane, yeah. that's a key, isn't it? Well, I like that last part. Uh, let it do its work so you become mature and well-developed. Sometimes we see a test just trying to show the areas where we're deficient or where we're going to fail. Yeah. And we look at a test as a negative thing. And, so, and God wants us to, again, change our perspective. Because what we see, what story we tell ourselves about the difficulties defines and determines what we're, how we're going to respond. But when we can understand that tests are about developing us and maturing us and refining us, then it becomes an opportunity for strengthening and uh, encouragement. Yeah, and if you think back at times when you took a test or an exam and you aced that exam, it gave you so much confidence. Other times, even if you didn't do well and a professor came up to you, you know, if you work a little hard at this for you know, the midterm, you're going to crush it. But you need to spend some more time studying this or you need to spend some more time in the lab going through this. Because what an instructor wants is they want me to not only just regurgitate the material for a score on a piece of paper, they want me to own it. Yeah. And I think that's the reason why we prepare for tests, so mm -hmm. that when they come, we're ready. And we know that tests are going to come in our life. And this is what God wants us to do, is to change our perspective about them, but also to be prepared for them. Yeah, and I think that that's over and over again where... I guess you and I wanted to get our discussion this morning is to say, all right, look, if God has a plan for me, and just like he did for Esther, just like he did for David, just like he did for uh, Moses, well, and God is using uh, crisis times to make that plan even more clear, well, then how do I prepare to cooperate with him? And I know this might seem simplistic to people, or to people who've been in church for a long time. But the truth is, this is why we need to be reading the Bible every single day. 
And so there's two things we can do to strengthen our trust in God. And the first, uh, first one of them is this. We can spend time daily with God in prayer and reading his word. The Bible is God's word. And in Romans 12, the Apostle Paul says, look, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. And then you'll learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. But if I'm not spending time in God's word, Shane, I mean, how is he going to use it to speak to me if it's just sitting on a shelf? Yeah, I mean, this is one of the ways that God prompts us and how he does speak to us. We talked about that from the verse in 2 Thessalonians. If we're not spending time with God, not just to check a box, oh, I read my Bible, so I did my good work for the day. We, we read the Bible so that we can know who God is. We can know his promises. We can know uh, how to treat people, what God's calling us to do four times just like this. And when we haven't prepared by spending our time getting to know him, when we get into a difficulty, we get overwhelmed because we look at our situation as opposed to God, the one who holds that in his hands. Uh, and when we read God's word, man, he'll speak to us. There have been times when I've spent time in his word lately, and from reading the story, I realize, oh, I need to apologize to somebody. Or other times, I need to go see somebody. Or other times, hey, I just need to hang on. God's working in this. I just need to be patient. And yet other times, it'll even be, I need to get going on that. I've been procrastinating. And so it depends on my circumstance, but God will always speak to me and he'll change the way I think if I'll just spend time in his word. It also strengthens our prayer life mm. because when we're in his word, we now, you know, a lot, there's a lot of times, well, I don't know what to talk to God about. We just talk about our same list over and over again, yep. but it makes it a conversation when we're in his word. Now, as God's speaking to us, we're, we can be speaking back to him and trying to do what prayer does, align us. So we say, God, I want your will, not just my will in this situation. And so it's terribly important that we spend time with him. There's another slide here, if we can get that put up. Um, you and I can get the YouVersion Bible app. It's free. If you don't have this on your phone or computer yet, go to Bible.com. I mean, how simple is that? It's absolutely free. There are dozens of translations, all kinds of devotional guides, Bible reading plans. It'll read it out loud to you if you're not proficient at uh, reading uh, out loud to others. You can even just hit a button and it'll play it back to you. Yeah. But it's so important that we use this, the technology that we have today, because if there was ever a time when it's important for us to spend some time each day in Bible study and prayer, it'd be now because there are opportunities all around us. Yeah, and so many times people, we say, read the Bible, and they're like, well, where do I begin? I've tried to read the Bible. That's why this Bible app is so helpful, because just as John said, you can go and you can search for Bible plans, and it'll bring up a whole host of words and just topics and themes, and I'm sure anything that when you look at it, you go, man, that's what my heart needs, then click on it and just start there, because God's Word is living and active. It's not so much about just how perfect the plan is, if you're trusting that God will speak to you, he will, and it'll be exactly what you need. Now, the other thing you can do is you can always call us here, or you can go to centeringlives.com and email us, hey, where are you reading today, John? And I'll be glad to tell you. Um, or you can just uh, get a hold of us, and we'll recommend, we can even go to the app and show you a couple of interesting studies that, uh, or guides that you can get into that would be really helpful. Now, so if I am going to be available for God to use during a time where I want to make the most of my situation, then I need to read the Bible and pray. And then the second thing I need to do is I need to do whatever God prompts me to do. And this is what I pray for. So if God has prompted me to apologize, if God has prompted me to check on a friend, then I need to be obedient to do that. Uh, listen to Psalm 32.8. The Lord promises this. This is for all of us, not just for me, but for all of us. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. God will give us counsel, and he's going to prompt us to do all kinds of interesting things. We've created a new page on our website at centeringlives.com. We've got photos of people doing all kinds of neat things in a day of social distancing. They are still loving God and loving their neighbors with, in all kinds of creative ways. Um, a couple of folks at our Wetumpka location uh, took their uh, uh, husband and wife, took their kids, and they went to some uh, people's houses who hadn't been out very much. And they wanted to encourage them. So 
they, uh, they're gifted in music and they sang some Christian songs for them while they were out on the porch uh, out in front. And then they uh, encouraged them and they prayed for them. And I think that's a neat idea. Yeah, I think one of the most important things is whatever God begins to prompt you, it's probably going to be putting your focus on someone else. And I think in the, in the time of circum, uh, difficult circumstances, that's one of the most helpful things we can do because sometimes we can just focus on how bad it is, me, well, poor me, and this is hard. But when we begin to look at this as an opportunity and focus on other people, how God's prompting us, you're going to find you're not only helping them, but you're helping yourself. Yeah, and what's so neat about this is that when God instructs us and teaches us, it's different for each one of us. I mean, when this whole story of the couple taking their family and going and singing at the neighbor's houses uh, was brought up to our elders uh, for a prayer meeting the other day, one of them reminded me, they go, John, you're not going to do that, right? Yeah. <laughs> he said, if you go and try to sing to people, that would be a really bad thing. <laughs> yes, that is not what God is prompting me to do. So I don't need to feel pressure saying, if God prompts you to do something, I can pray for you and encourage you. And then I ask God, well, what are you prompting me to do? It might be the same, but Shane, it could be something completely different. Yeah, I mean, there's so many, again, one another's in Scripture. Forgiving one another, encouraging one another, praying for one another, helping one another, being patient with one another. I mean, these are all things that God is still speaking to us about in our current circumstance. Okay, so let's circle back around on this. When we started today, we talked about Esther. She was in a crisis where her people, if she didn't speak up, her people would die. And because she spoke up, she rescued a whole, her whole race. She rescued the Jewish people. Well, again, maybe God isn't calling me to do anything on that scale. But because Esther recognized this and seized the moment, God used her to make a difference in her generation. What if I could make a difference today in my family? What if I could make a difference today with a coworker or a friend from school? Just with an encouraging email, because God prompted me to write that. Or maybe I spent some extra time in prayer, and as I did that, I was just prompted to go check on somebody down the street. Or I was prompted to go give blood. And later on, I found out that, man, my blood type was exactly what they needed. Whatever God prompts us to do, he'll make that clear, and he'll give us the power to do it. Now, if you joined us today, and you have never been a part of Centerpoint or any other church, and you're not sure what it means to even have a personal relationship with Jesus, let me assure you today that the creator God of this universe knows exactly what's going on in our country. He knows exactly what's going on around the world. And he knows exactly what's going on in each one of our hearts. And he wants a personal relationship with us so he can guide us safely along the best pathway for our lives. And the way we enter into a right relationship with him is by coming to him and surrendering our lives to him. It means confessing our sins, acknowledging that we need him, and embracing the good news that God sent his son Jesus in the world to make that relationship possible. He did that by sending his son to die on the cross for our sins, and we would love to explain to you what that's all about. And so if you have questions, please call us or email us. Visit our website. All the contact information is there. We would love to talk to you. But I want to have a word of prayer for us now today that God would show us what he has in store for us, all of us, during a time when people need light as much as they ever have. At that candlelight service, we said, oh God, in 2020, I led a prayer for every single person there. We prayed, oh God, in 2020, would you use me to be a bright light in this world? This is a moment for us to be bright lights. Will you pray with me, please? Oh, gracious God, I thank you that in the midst of crisis, the purpose for you placing us here becomes abundantly clear. Father, you may be taking us into situations where we can bring hope to somebody who's hopeless. You may be taking us into circumstances where we can help somebody who desperately needs help. Father, you may be taking us to places where people need to know you. 
because everything they've been trusting in has been shaken. And so God, wherever you want us to go today, we ask that you would burn brightly in our lives. Oh God, I pray that you would give us a hunger and a thirst for righteousness, a desire to read your word. And Father, that you would show us, that you would prompt us in a whole host of things, in all kinds of creative ways, so we could serve you faithfully in this world, in our generation. And then Father, just like Paul, I pray that you'll give us the strength to do whatever you prompt us to do. Hmm. I just thank you for how creative you are, God. I thank you that you love it when we come to you and surrender our lives to you. And I'm asking now, Lord, that you would burn brightly in each one of us so we'd shine out like stars in a nighttime sky. We pray these things in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.